x is a random variable taking positive integer values and having expectation of x equals 1, expectation of x squared equals 2, and expectation of x cubed equals 5. What is the smallest value that the probability of x equals 0 can take? We can first find a simple example of a variable that satisfies the conditions in the question. And to reduce the complexity of the problem, let's search for a variable that takes only four values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Denote by p0, p1, p2, and p3, respectively, the probabilities. In general, the smallest value that the probability of x equals 0 can take is 0. In our case, if x is never 0, and since it can only take positive values, the random variable must be the constant 1 to achieve the expectation of x equals 1. This variable does not respect the remaining conditions on x squared and x cubed, so the probability that x is 0 must be positive. Our focus now is on computing p0. We remind ourselves of the definition of the expectation of x to the power of k and apply it to the identity, the square and the cube of x, equating them to the known values. It all translates into a system of three linear equations with three unknowns. There are at least two ways to solve this system, and you should use the one in which you are confident in both your speed and accuracy. For the sake of the example, I'm going to use a hybrid method. The first way to solve it is to simplify it by reducing p1 from the second and third equations. We achieve this by doing two subtractions. At this point, you can eliminate p2 by subtracting three times the second line from the third. An alternative is the use of Cramer's rule for equation solving. We need the determinant of the matrix of coefficients, which we can compute using a decomposition along the first line. It isn't difficult, since we only have one non-zero value in this column. We also have to calculate the determinants of the matrices where we repeatedly replace a column with a column vector p. We can use Saros's rule or the decomposition along a row or column. With all the components determined, we apply Cramer's rule and get the values a half, zero, and a sixth for p1, p2, and p3, respectively. A quick stop to check our results in Python using NumPy's linear algorithm solver, and we can continue with the last unknown value, probability of x equals 0. The four probabilities sum up to 1. Hence, p0 is a third. We have an example of a random variable that satisfies the condition posed in the question. In this example, x does not take values of more than 3. Extending the possible values should reduce the probability that x equals 0. We'll see if that's the case. One way to describe the sequence of values that the probability of x equals x can take is by using the probability generating function. Its definition is g of s equals the expectation of s to the power of x. In itself, s to the power of x is a random variable for which we can expand the expectation by the standard formula. Here's a concise refresher of the properties of a PGF alongside brief proofs. g of 0 equals the probability that x equals 0. Replace s with 0 in the expanded formula. All terms, starting with the second one, are equal to 0. And knowing that by convention 0 to the power of 0 is 1, the remainder is probability of x equals 0. g of 1 equals 1. The random variable 1 to the power of x is 1, so the expected value is 1 as well. G derivative of 1 is the expectation of x. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Replace s with 1 in the formula. It then becomes the value of the expectation of x. More complex proofs generate similar results for second, third, and higher degrees derivatives. The expectation of the products such as x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, and so on, is called the factorial moment, and it is a good starting place for further reading for those interested. In the particular case of our x, we can numerically compute the values of these derivatives. Repeating ourselves, g of 1 equals 1. g derivative of 1 is the expectation of x, which is 1, given from the question. The second derivative of g of 1 is expectation of x squared minus x, 
which expands linearly to get one. And the third derivative of g of one is the expectation of x cubed minus three times x squared plus two x, which equals one as well, following the same logic as above. We have a function and its higher level derivatives at point one. What can it do with it to obtain the value g of zero? How about using Taylor's remainder theorem? It states that we can approximate the value of the function g in x using the derivatives of g at a different point and adding a remainder defined by a value c. Since we know some of its derivatives, the value used to compute the estimate is one. The expansion of g of x is according to the formula on the screen. If you want to know more about the Taylor series and subsequent estimates, there are references to some handy videos in the description box. Now we can take x equals zero, replace the known values for g of one, g derivative of one, etc., and arrive at the result. g of zero is a third plus the remainder term. As a polynomial with positive coefficients, g has a positive four derivative for a positive value of c. The remainder is at least zero, so the probability that x equals zero is at least a third. We would now have had the task of finding an example of a random variable that achieves this minima, but we are lucky that we already found it in the exploratory part of this question. Thanks for watching and thank you to our Patreons. If you want to support us in making more videos, you can check our Patreon page. If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to be notified when new videos are released. Leave any comments about this problem below or on the problems dedicated webpage. For more info, please check the description box below. See you next time!